Welcome back to the Kinetics Playlist on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in these first couple of videos, we're going to discuss two of the most basic, complex mechanisms in kinetics and physical chemistry. And the first one is going to be the steady state approximation. Okay, The other one, which is the pre-equilibrium approximation, we will cover in the next video. Now, I will say this, the steady state approximation is by far of the two probably the most important one that you need to be very familiar with doing the calculations for because this approximation tends to be used for pretty much all the other complex mechanisms that you'll see. In fact, as we'll look at another video, the Lindemann mechanism, it pretty much is just the steady state approximation. So this one is very important to understand. All right, let's look at the equation right here. So I've got a chemical reaction. A plus B, these are my reactants or substrates, they're in equilibrium with species C, and the forward reaction of the equilibrium is K1, the reverse is K negative 1, and then C can be consumed to form D, and that's expressed by this one-way rate constant K2. All right. So in this reaction, C is what we call an intermediate, because it's being consumed by the reaction of K2, but it's also being formed through the reaction of K1. And so C is going to be our intermediate here. Now, what is the steady state approximation? This is an assumption, and it says that the rate of the formation of this intermediate C is equal to the rate of the consumption of C. So whatever C is being formed, it's immediately consumed at the same rate to form the product D. What that means is that even though I always have some concentration of C because some is being formed, the rate of change of the intermediate with respect to time is zero, meaning this concentration of C is not changing with time. That's a key assumption. So what we say is this general derivative right here, the rate of change of the intermediate with respect to time is zero, or the derivative of the concentration of the intermediate with respect to time is zero. Now in the context of this equation, C is my intermediate, so I could put a C right here and say dc dt. All right, let's look at the equation up here at the top. I have two reactants, A and B, are in equilibrium with species C, and the forward reaction is given by K1, the reverse reaction is given by K minus 1, and then C can be consumed to form the product D in relation to this rate constant K2. All right? So in this equation, C is what we call an intermediate. Okay? It is both formed by this K1 reaction, but also consumed by the K2 reaction. So it's both formed and consumed, which makes it an intermediate. Now, in the steady state approximation, we have a very important key assumption. And that is that the rate of formation of C is equal to the rate of consumption of C. That basically means, in layman's terms, whatever C is formed, it's immediately consumed to form D. So the rate that C is being made is equal to the rate at which it's being consumed. And so what that means is that the rate of, the, of C with respect to T, in other words, the change in the concentration of the intermediate C with respect to time, is zero. Because any C that's formed is consumed at the same rate. So there is, there is an actual non-zero concentration of the intermediate C. It's just that its rate of change with respect to time is zero because any that's formed is consumed at the same rate. And this is the general derivative that expresses that, and this is the key assumption right here. And in the context of this equation, we could replace this intermediate i with c and say the derivative of the concentration of c with respect to time is zero, or I'll just say dc dt equals zero. Now, whenever you do a steady state approximation problem, every single time you always start with whatever the intermediate is, and you look at its change in concentration with respect to time. If the intermediate in some other one was f, you would start with df dt. Now, we want to set up an expression for how the concentration of that intermediate changes with time. So let's look at what forms C. The only reaction that's forming C is that of K1. So it's going to be positive K1 times its reactants, A times B. Now we have two reactions that are consuming C, so decreasing its concentration, K negative 1 and K2. Well, the reason this K negative 1 is negative is because it's removing C effectively because it's going backwards. So the rate would be K negative 1, and the substrate with respect to that reaction is C 
because we're moving to the left, okay? So it'd be K negative one C with a minus sign. And then this other reaction is going to the right. It's also consuming C. So we have K2, it's rate constant, it's a negative. And then times the reactant of that particular reaction, C. So that is my expression for how the rate, how the concentration of C, the intermediate, changes with time. But I can set this derivative equal to zero because that's our key assumption of the steady state approximation. So I set it equal to zero, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the concentration of whatever that intermediate is. Okay? So solve for, in this case, C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of these negative uh, expressions because they all contain a C over to the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to get is a positive K minus 1 times C plus K2 times C. On the other side I still have K1 and then A times B. Now all my C's are on the other side. So I can factor out that concentration of C and what I get is K minus 1 plus K2 equals K1 times A times B. Now I can get an expression for the concentration of C by dividing both sides by the sum K minus 1 plus K2. So that means my concentration of C is going to be equal to K1 times A times B divided by the quantity K minus 1 plus K2. Now how is that useful? Well I want the overall rate of this equation, which is described by this last reaction right here, C goes to D in relation to K2. So what is the formation of D? How do I express that rate? The formation of D is the change in concentration of my product D with respect to time is equal to its reaction, K2 times the reactant or substrate concentration of C. Well, that's pretty handy because I just calculated what the concentration of C is equal to in other terms. So I'm just going to plug this entire expression in for concentration of C. Therefore, the rate that the concentration of D changes over time, which is the rate of the product formation over time, or the rate of reaction, is equal to K2 times this whole expression, K1 times A times B, divided by the quantity K minus 1 plus K2. Now, you can, you know, try and factor things, but that's pretty much useless. And most most ra rational, reasonable professors would be fine if you left the expression like this. And that's how you do any steady state approximation problem, okay? Now, in the next video, we're going to cover a very similar technique with a different assumption called the pre-equilibrium approximation. And we're going to ultimately obtain an expression using the same reaction sequence that's very similar to this, but different in one way. Now, before we conclude this video, let me just say this. It is very important that you understand how to do the steady state approximation because pretty much every other complex mechanism that you will see in physical chemistry is going to use this. In fact, it's much easier to think of these other complex mechanisms as simply being more steady state approximation problems. Don't try and memorize all these derivations of all these complex mechanisms. All they are is steady state approximation. So in the next video we're going to cover pre-equilibrium approximation and then we're going to do some complex mechanisms and pretty much we're going to be using SSA. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe.